Oh, come on. Come on. Oh, now, come on. Well now, here's somebody you don't see out very often. It's my horn puff adder, and you can see why I don't take her out too much, because she is a handful. Now you keep your mouth open like that, and we'll wash all this substrate out. There. Here, now wipe a... Uh, You can see she's not uh, terribly used to being held. Uh, I've maybe held her probably four or five times in maybe as many years, probably not even. And she's very embarrassed because she m missed a mouse because I give her a live one periodically. And she missed it and got a mouthful of substrate. So I was just cleaning the substrate out. So she's very angry, very mad, and an unhappy camper. The big deal made over LD50s and which snake is uh, more toxic than the other is really sort of a ridiculous uh, uh, discussion in the first place, and it really annoys me. Uh, it doesn't really matter. For instance, if I shoot you in the head from 10 feet away with this uh, 223 round or a 5.56 millimeter round, or shoot you with this 12 gauge slug from a shotgun, if I hit you in the head, either way you're going to be dead. It doesn't really matter whether it came from the muzzle of the 223 or the 12 gauge shotgun. Just like it doesn't matter if you get bit by an inland taipan or a Papua New Guinea taipan. Those few hundreds of a milligrams difference in toxicity is not going to make a whole hell of a lot of difference. Every bite is different. You can have dry bites, you can have wet bites, and you can have really wet bites, and anything in between. All depends on the circumstances. Now the LD50 charts describe the relative toxicity of snake venom in mice. It has nothing to do with what the toxicity in humans uh, is. LD50 charts are just tools for scientists to say that this venom took X number of milligrams per per kilogram of weight of the mouse victim to kill 50 percent of the population that were used in the experiment. Let's say you have a hundred mice. Uh, an LD50 for uh, an inland taipan is 0 0.025 milligrams per kilogram. Okay, so uh, that's what it would take the dosage to kill f approximately 50 of those mice. The other 50 would survive. That's the ideal and that's the idea behind the experiment of, and the theory behind LD50. Lethal dose 50 percent is what it stands for. Now, in uh, many cases, Venoms act differently on different animals. For instance, uh, to go out of the snake world a little bit, 
Let's take the Sydney funnel web spider. It could kill an adult human, certainly a child, in rather short order. That's why they make antivenin for it. However, your, your little house cat down in Australia can bat that thing around with total impunity. The venom is different and it doesn't attach and bind to the neurons. That's why snakes have different venoms even within the same species over an area because it's the type of prey they're going after. Snakes tune their venoms through evolution to act on certain prey items and there's clear publications throughout the uh, snake world uh, to demonstrate this. There's many papers by uh, Brian Fry and Wolfgang Wooster and, and Brian Fry has seen it uh, excuse me, Sean Bush has seen it out on the west coast with uh, Crotalus heleri. One side of the hill has heleri with a neurotoxic venom. The absolute opposite side of the hill has mostly uh, hemorrhagic or hemolytic venom. And these venoms look different in composition and certainly in, in the outcome. So, you know, just back off the LD50 chart, all it, all it implies is this snake, it takes this number of milligrams uh, to kill half the mice in the population. It has no correlation to humans. Yes, you can make a general inference that, wow, this one's really more toxic than uh, uh, the other. It really doesn't make a difference. The snakes that kill the most people on the planet are not inland type ants. And they're not even king cobras. They're saw scale vipers and Russell's vipers. One, because they're numerous where people are. They have very potent venom, and size doesn't matter. Saw scale versus a uh, Russell's viper, uh, totally different thing. And the ability of the people to uh, get proper medical care. Those are the factors their health, their well-being, the situation of the bite, everybody's different. The LD50 chart is just a comparison between different species of snakes and their toxicity of their venom in mice only. So that's a little primer on LD50s and uh, let's not get into the pissing match about uh, which snake uh, is more toxic, uh, you know, because it doesn't matter. Because either case, whether it's an inland taipan or it's a Russell's viper, uh, dead is dead. And same thing with these two uh, cartridges. Either one, under right circumstances, will kill you. Doesn't matter how big or how small or how potent or, or anything. So just uh, get over it and uh, uh, move on. Yes, they're all toxic and dangerous. But the one that injects venom into you is certainly the one you need to worry about. Other than that, it's just a non-issue. Thanks. Take care. Here, bud. Stay right there. Here. Want some water? Yeah, I know you want some water. Well, how about uh, slowing down and cooperating? Huh? This is a young rhino viper, a young male, not quite in his best colors. Goodness, sorry, bud. There we go. Let's sort of can see him now. He's uh, enjoying a nice drink. Well, let's see if I can destroy some more stuff. Break my hook. Here, come on this way. There we go.
Uh, is that tasty, huh? Oh, that's yummy, huh, bud? I'm tidying things up uh, in their cage, so I figured since I had them out, I would uh, give him a nice drink and see if he wanted to uh, say hello to the people out there in YouTube land. And you know, I tell people often, with the exception of sniffs, most of these rhinos I pretty much have left alone uh, since they arrived here. Because rhinos get weirded out very easily. And you can see, he's drinking, but he's watching the camera. Oh, is that tasty, huh? Very nice. Do you on, huh? Yeah, we'll let all that water run down your throat. Oh, blowing bubbles now. You want some more? Huh? You want some more? Yeah, you can get you some more. More is not a problem. Oh, look at that. See, with spraying it in their mouth, you give them a lot more than they're used to taking at one time, so I try to Try to give them a bit of a break and let them breathe and swallow and everything. Otherwise, uh, uh you gonna open up for us, huh? Oh, is that tasty? Oh, you wanna come see the camera? You're gonna whack it, huh? Baby Rhino Viper Cam. Isn't that nice? He's so friendly and came over and to see everybody and stick his nose in the camera voluntarily. See, it's not a threat. It's not a threat. There you go. And of course now, he's keyed in on me because I'm, uh, I'm sitting behind the camera, down on the floor, sort of, sort of staying out of view. Remember, I don't want to stress these guys. The female is self-stressing. This is the male. He seems to be a good little guy. Oh, I'll just drink off the towel here since there's a lot. Alright, bud, you go ahead and do that. I'll go get a ball so you can have some out of a ball. See, he's, he's wanting to climb the hook and, uh, and come and visit me, aren't you, huh? And once you figure, I gave him the ball and he wasn't really uh, all that much interested in drinking out of the bowl. So with that said, I'll take this young guy. You're okay. No, 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 no. Don't get upset because you'll lose your water. There you go. You're back in your home. Just stay away from the bitch over there. She'll bite you. Well, here's Mr. Brown. Whoa. <laughs> He is so fast. He is so fast.
He does eat them fairly quick now. Jeez. He's a pig stank. Or she's a pig stank, I'm not sure which. Is there more? Please, sir, may I have some more? You hang out there. Oh, uh, tug of war time. Oh, I'll rip this rat in half. He's persistent. I want it, I want it, I want it. Alright, alright. Alright. No use getting hyper about it. 